My name is Fred Watson. Uh, my job is Australia's astronomer at large, working for the Australian government. But my very first job was working for the company that built John Tebbett's telescope. John Tebbett's Grubb telescope is the archetypal uh, high-end 19th century telescope and a very able instrument, a very capable instrument for uh, an observatory of the kind that John Tebbett had originated and ran. It is a refracting telescope, which means it uses a lens to form the image rather than a mirror. The lens diameter, which is the, the key parameter in any telescope, was eight inches or 200 millimeters. Uh, and that meant that it could see really quite faint objects. John Tebbett used the Grubb telescope probably every clear night throughout the remainder of his life uh, until he stopped being a professional sort of astronomer in the early 1900s. But he, um, he would have used it uh, as a kind of general workhorse instrument for whatever observations he needed to make. And they included uh, primarily the observations of objects in the solar system, uh, and that includes the planets. He studied the moons of the planet Jupiter he used it for observing other smaller objects in the solar system, asteroids, um, actually calculating their positions by using the accurate positional capabilities of the telescope. But also he looked at the stars and um, because the telescope was equipped with a micrometer, he could measure the separation of double stars. He studied those things as well as the brightnesses of stars. He was very um, keen to observe the way stars might vary in brightness. He studied comets. Comets were what made John Tebbett famous because he discovered in 1861, the great comet of 1861, which was um, a, a major discovery, Comet Tebbett, uh, and that was seen throughout the world. He would have observed and measured their positions with the eight inch telescope. Tebbett's telescope was made uh, in 1882. And in fact, the date is cast into part of that mountain. Uh, it was made for an astronomer in Victoria, a man by the name of William Bone. Mr. Bone ordered this telescope from the manufacturer in Ireland. Sadly, a few years after that, not many years, he died. And John Tebbett bought the telescope from Bone's estate for the princely sum of 400 pounds. The company that made it uh, was one of the finest telescope making companies in the world with a completely international reputation. All astronomers knew of the Grubb Company. And the company had its origins actually in the 1830s when a man called Thomas Grubb, he was based in Dublin in Ireland, uh, worked with a group of Irish astronomers to, uh, to build telescopes. John Tebbett's eight-inch telescope was the successor to earlier ones that he'd had. In fact, his, its immediate successor was a four and a half inch telescope. So why did Tebbett have this succession of instruments? And it comes down to something that in astronomy today we call aperture fever. Uh, it's this issue that whenever you have a telescope, uh, you use it and you enjoy it, uh, but there's always something that is just a little bit too faint to see in the telescope that you've got that you would really like to have a look at and so what you want is a bigger telescope that will gather more light and show you fainter objects. And Tebbett was the same as all astronomers. He always wanted to improve his vision of the universe and to see things that hitherto he hadn't be, been able to observe. So in particular, the eight inch telescope would show fainter stars. It will give you better views of the planets because a bigger telescope also reveals more detail. It allows you to magnify images more. And so his views of Jupiter and Jupiter's moons would have been much more significant in the eight inch than the four and a half inch. Uh, and likewise with other objects, he would be able to detect fainter comets than what he could with a smaller telescope. Telescopes are interesting instruments, but uh, in the case of many of these instruments, and Tebbett's eight inch telescope falls absolutely into this class, they are really important cultural assets. They are artifacts that really resonate with the place where they were used, where the discoveries that were made with them were actually carried out. It is a place 
where Tebbutt stamped his mark in an enormous way during the second half of the 19th century, uh, really put Windsor on the map from an astronomical perspective, and that was a global perspective. And that telescope, having played such an enormous role in that rise to fame, uh, definitely belongs in Windsor uh, and is something that should be treasured uh, by the community and looked after because of its astronomical heritage.